So there's been a lot of research done both in chronic pain populations, that is people who are experiencing chronic pain, as well as in the general community uh, where questions are asked of people about how much pain they experience. And the findings are quite consistent that women experience, or at the very least report, more pain than men. Um, and so we know that from a clinical perspective, women bear a greater burden of pain than do men. And so in our laboratory and in lots of others uh, across the country, we bring people in and we induce pain in a controlled way. So we might apply a certain amount of heat or a certain amount of pressure and ask people, for example, to tell us when it first becomes painful, that would be the pain threshold, or we ask people to tell us when they can no longer tolerate the pain, that would be pain tolerance. And in those studies, it's quite consistent that women have a lower pain threshold and a lower pain tolerance than men. There are genetic factors that make influence pain differently in women versus men. That's one of the things that we're continuing to research in our laboratory. How can genetic factors be related to anything? Well, a gene is basically a blueprint or an instruction set for a particular protein or a particular chemical in the body or something like that. Uh, and if your genotype for that particular chemical is different from my genotype, that may mean you make a different kind of chemical than I do and your chemical works differently. That may affect any number of things from, depending on what chemical we're talking about, from how you feel pain to whether you're at risk for diabetes to how much uh, emotional distress you experience. So that these genes are really instructions for different biological systems uh, in the body. And we know that behavioral factors, uh, cognitive factors, that is how we think, how we feel, all of these things have direct effects on the chemicals in our body. In addition, you can imagine in our society that social factors might be important. Um, when I talk about gender differences in pain, somebody in the audience inevitably says, well, how do you know men aren't just denying that they're having pain or being macho? When I bring men and women into my laboratory, uh, men are more motivated to show a higher pain tolerance than women because of the way we socialize boys and girls in this society. There is evidence that that plays a role in pain perception. So if you measure with a questionnaire, if you measure levels of masculinity, for example, the more masculine um, men are especially, but also women, uh, the higher their pain tolerance. However, in most of the studies, even after you account for that, there's still a sex difference in pain perception. Most people who are studying genetics now realize that for the complex diseases that we're trying to treat these days, like chronic pain and heart disease and diabetes uh, and cancer, we can learn all that there is to know about the genetics of these things, but if we don't understand people's behavior, if we don't understand how they interact with their environment, we're never going to have all the information we need in order to be able to diagnose and treat and hopefully prevent the development of these disorders. When we do this type of pain research, we rely usually on samples of convenience, that is people who are willing to come in and do our studies. And so one of the things we do when we advertise our studies is instead of saying, come get your pain tolerance tested, we say, uh, you know, we're conducting a sensory testing study. And then when people call in for the study, we explain to them in detail what's involved, but in neutral terms, not as though, you know, they're coming in for a, a reality show where whoever tolerates the most pain is going to win, but that we're interested in understanding their sensory responses to different types of stimuli. Some of the stimuli may be painful, other stimuli may not be painful. And so we try to be as neutral as possible. And there is a concern that we'll recruit people who are more tolerant of pain than people in the general population. But it's actually the case 
that we get the whole range of pain tolerance. We get some people who are extremely sensitive to pain who volunteer for these studies, and we get some people who are quite tolerant to pain, and we get everything in between. So we capture the whole range of pain sensitivity, so we're not just recruiting the people who enjoy pain or, or who can really tolerate pain.